Good afternoon. So a uh, short brief on the, the progress of the company of 2017 and 2018. Very important in uh, cell therapy is a CMC. It's a manufacturing technology excellence, the advance of the autologous cell therapy platform. As I just said, a CMC platform for the CNS space. And also we were able to validate neuron cryopreservation in phase two we used fresh cells in phase three, we knew that we're going to have to have multi-doses for ALS, and therefore we're very happy that we we're able to be very patient-friendly and have only one BMA for the duration of the trial or duration of treatment after an approval. We have strong clinical and basic science, a phase three ALS study enrolling at six U.S. sites. It's only phase three currently enrolling trial in the States for ALS. And we also have a quite a broad CNS preclinical pipeline, which we will be enhancing and proceeding later in 2018. And just next week, we were accepted to uh, platform presentations uh, at the American Academy of Neurology. I call you to follow that. And uh, we got lately an undilutive grant for the phase three from California Institution for Regenerative Medicine, CIRM and also the Israeli Innovation Authority pitches in a few million dollars, but CERN gave a $60 million grant. It's almost 50% of the trial. And we were patient focused. We have a higher patient advocacy leadership, and we expanded our phase three story lately to include ALS patients from Canada as well. So a little bit on the product you can see on the left-hand side, side, we compared the regular mesenchymal cells to differentiated cells and you see the dramatic increase of uh, neurotrophic factors with neuron, which is the red. In, so we show you here, of course, GDNF, BDNF, VEGF, and AGF, which are all relevant for the CNS space. And also you can see uh, from our phase two results, and the left-hand side, you see the general population. Uh, at four weeks, you see even a statistical result in a non-power non efficacy trial. It was a safety trial, and the, even up to 24 weeks you see patients, and when you look at the subgroup that was pre-specified of the fast progressors, you see even up to 12 weeks a statistical result in a 1.5 improvement ALS slope, ALS FRSR score when you compare pre-slope, pre-treatment to after treatment of the slope. And as you can see, this is uh, preclinical of this of neurons started in 2007, and the clinical trial first phase one was in 2010, and now we are on the pivotal phase three of neuron. Also what lately we were able to strengthen our management. We are with us here Dr. Ralph Kern that joined us from, joined us from Biogen and uh, our board of directors was strengthened with uh, leaders in the cell therapy field. Arturo Raya from Novartis was involved in the CAR-T cell. June Almanoff was a board member in Tygenix which was just an organic cell therapy just bought by Takira and Tony Polverino is the current uh, KITE chief scientist officer and just a few months ago joined our board too. Uh, just lately, uh, our chief medical officer, Dr. Kern, was able to form a very strong scientific advisory board led by a renowned scientist, uh, Gerald Chun, uh, Stanley Appel, who is very well known in the ALS industry. Some call him the Mr. ALS disease, and Ahmed Barar. So that's a short uh, synopsis of where we are. I want to leave some time for uh, questions and answers. Sure. So from a big picture perspective, I guess, you know, right now we're, we're in, a, in a time era where you know, gene therapy focusing on one particular, you know, antigen, cell therapy, CD19, right, or PCMA. I guess from a big per picture perspective, why cell therapy? And more specifically, is it even kind of viable um, and, and really economical um, to ta tackle this kind of a complex indication? Well, these are very good questions, and the truth is, in, before 2017, we faced it in every meeting, this question. But lately, we have a simple answer for that, that at least the, in this, for these issues of uh, cell therapy, and the question is, is it economical, is it viable, is it deliverable? And we heard previously also on the panel the same question, and on the panel you had the CAR-T cell companies, and they, they at least gave the answer that personal cell therapy is viable and is economical. Now, 
why are we looking to see in space for that? I think everyone knows that so many big pharma, so many companies of the big pharma are closing down the CNS departments. And the reason is that probably CNS space, CNS diseases are very complex. And uh, probably not an, there won't be an a bi antibody or a molecular that will be able to treat uh, meaningfully these diseases. ALS is not going to be treated by an antibody. And uh, cell therapy is, uh, has the multi-dimensional delivery system and multi-dimensions to it. And you can almost have any relevant cargo delivered through it. And uh, it migrates where it needs to. And uh, being autologous, it uh, doesn't have the safety issues. So I think that that, that would be... I, I, I would like to believe that what CAR-T therapy is in oncology, CNS, in the CNS space, the stem cell therapy would be the answer. So can you talk a little bit about your mesenchymal stem cells and, uh, and just the manufacturing you know, of, of those? Yeah, definitely. So I think we got it as close as we can to an allogeneic product. Patient would come in to wherever he lives. He doesn't have to travel next to a manufacturing center. So wherever his doctor is, and he will have a bone marrow aspiration. It will be shipped to the manufacturing center wherever, and we are able then to cryopreserve a product for this person. So whenever he's gonna need treatment, only seven days before treatment, we will have to manufacture the product for him and deliver it. So we defreeze, differentiate, and expand, and in a single syringe, have 125 million cells delivered to his doctor, back to his clinic, and a simple intrathecal injection does it. Simple. So the, the, I guess the take home here is multifactorial disease indications. One BMA. Right, and, and so a multifactorial cell therapy. Platform. Definitely, so we have other indications as well. We talked a little bit in the past about our other preclinical. We are having to take a decision and we are going to take a decision very soon. What are our additional indications and additional similar products as well? And so there's some good surprises coming up in the next few months. So when I look out at the audience, I can see um, uh, there are a lot more younger people here, so they may not know that, you know, the ALS, as far as I've been in the space, has been a virtual graveyard. And so maybe can you talk a little bit about um, your, the, the competitors in the space and maybe what you've learned from those studies uh, and how you're applying those learnings to your current study? So, well, I, I rather won't name too many other names because I want to say what I learned from those studies. So first... I learned from some of the studies that you have to be very, very careful on the CMC. Uh, it has to be a, a very strong, robust product. I can tell you that we, uh, the regulatory dictated that to do various tech transfers. And every tech transfer, they wanted to have a GAN3 dry runs. So when we are now phase two, we had first the Israeli tech transfer, and then we had to Dana Farber in Boston, and then to the Mayo Clinic, and now to City of Hope. And I can tell you that all track transfers, all, and each center had three separate ones, were flawless, not one dry run failed. So I think that attests to what we learned from others, that they don't have such a robust treatment. Every tech transfer is a little bit different. And then the question is, is the product similar? That's one question. And then from Cytokinetics, which I can mention, they did a very professional trial again and again, and probably we believe that if it's not stem cells, it's going to be hard to treat ALS. So it's like Alzheimer's, it's also a graveyard of diseases. So maybe we can talk about the ongoing study. Um, can you give us some details? You know, how big, what are the timelines for the data readout? Yeah, definitely. So our phase two study was, uh, we saw a very strong signal of efficacy, but the question everyone asked, and we ask ourselves, it only, was only 48 patients, three or one randomization. And even though we had very strong biomarker support, we know that we have to do another phase to power, to efficacy. In addition to that, we also knew that we want to do multi-doses. And we're very happy that the agency didn't have a safety issue with multi-doses. So this is a, a, going to be now a cryopreserved product. And at baseline, we're going to give one treatment, two months after a second, four months after a third treatment. And of course, we follow up and we do more CSF collections for additional biomarkers and more robust. And I think the 200 patients we overpowered to efficacy, 100 patients will get treatment, three treatments, 100 patients, placebo only. And if we replicate the results of the subgroup, with, which was pre-specified, which is the fast progressors, which we see there are twice fold effect than the general population, I think that's the BLA.
So just remind us the endpoint um, and, yes. and when, I guess, when do you think you can complete enrollment? And when do you think, I think it's a one year uh, uh, endpoint, right? Yeah, so it's a 11 and a half months to be exact. But yes, we're not enrolling all patients at once, even though we have a flood of patients in the centers. But it's a cell therapy, so we have one manufacturing center, City of Hope. Very good, the best in academics. So based on the Gantt that we can treat and manufacture, we are, we are enrolling the patients. I believe that we are more or less on time. A two, three months deviation was in the beginning. So we're looking at the end of 2019, the first quarter of 2020, to have the top-line results of this trial. Um, and that would be the end of 11 and a half months of the last patient enrolled. So probably it should be not later than the beginning of 2019, the last patients enrolled. And I guess just from a regulatory perspective, there is nothing else um, approved for ALS. And so how are you looking at your regulatory So that's another thing we learned from all the companies. That also goes back to the cruise discretion. So the only thing that was approved lately was Radicapa from Mitsubishi Tanaba. And we saw that the agency approved it, even though it was somewhat clinically meaningful. It means 0 0.3 points per month in the ALS of our score difference. And we show for, for the patients that are responders uh, a three to four fold effect. So we don't think that the, we have a very good high bar, a very clinically meaningful effect. So we just have to replicate those results in phase three, and I think we'll have a good PLA. So can you talk a little bit, I think you mentioned you know, that this is really a platform technology. Um, can you talk about why it's a platform? And I guess you know, when we look at preclinical, um, you know, what are potential viable indications going forward? So yes, the, this company was founded by late uh, Professor Melamed, who was a Parkinson KOL, and wanted to find a cure for Parkinson. We deviated for regulatory reasons, and also we were trying to figure out in a multi-dose, how do you do injections? So in ALS, it's an interthecal injection, it's very similar, simple, but the in-brain injection for Parkinson to do once is not a problem, but to do it every two months, not every clinician <laughs> would agree to that. That's an understatement. So we, I think we figured, we figured that out. And the same goes, you know, when you look at MS, we had some good results, but there are some good MS products today, so we're not sure we want to compete there, but when you look at progressive MS, that's something we're looking at very closely. Uh, we had a very strong paper in preclinical and autism last year, and even we compared regular melanchymal to, to neuron, which is a differentiated cells, and we saw a dramatic higher result. And Duke just had a very interesting trial in autism with melanchymal cells, so we're looking at that also. And uh, we're looking at hunting, and we're looking at several, we're close to, get to some decisions, and maybe some partnerships. So we'll, we'll leave something for the next conference. And I guess, you know, um, my final question is, for a phase three company, um, the market cap of Brainstorm doesn't seem to adequately reflect, you know, kind of the advanced stage of development. And that can sometimes be because, you know, it's a, it's a tough disease, investors don't know enough about it, just what are your, what are your thoughts and, and how do you plan on combating it? It's a good point. So first of all, yes. First of all, an Israeli company, so less awareness. Uh, I want to remind you that what we have done is enormously, I, I want to commend our team, it's 22 people, and what we have done is our own CMC for cell therapy, you know, it, it, it's big. Uh, when uh, the Kite uh, Chief Scientist Officer joined us, he didn't believe that we have only 22 patients we were able to do this. So it's awareness. We were more focused on getting the phase three. Now we are out in this awareness tour, and this is part of it. Also, I would challenge you. You're an analyst, and hopefully you, you would now be aware. I mentioned us. I, I think this is something very attractive. I want to remind you that also Kite, which was the first CAR-T cell to be approved, and it was a U.S.-based company, so they had more awareness. And Arya, you know, had even after a big exit before, so he's well known. And still, they had a hard time. And, they, and when they started phase three, they were 250 million, and uh, they sold at 12 billion. So, proportionally, if we are now at 70 million and we'll sell at 5 billion, I don't know if I'm going to sell. But <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, CAR T cells. People were very skeptical about it, and the 2017 was evolution of CAR T cells. Stem cells is a question, and I think our data, data has to speak, and we have to go out on the road and tell our story again and again, and show more and more robust data. That, that's the story. All right, good luck with the phase three, and thank you very much. Just up zero, zero, zero. That was good timing. Thank you.